If you wanna have fun, if you wanna be free, tune in to Just TV. Just TV. Just TV. Welcome back to another week of Just TV. Thank you for joining me. As you can see, I'm doing this alone. Draggy Show couldn't make it, which is unfortunate. I already miss him. Not only is he a good podcast partner, but he also brings the beer. So what I like about uh, what's going on right now is uh, kind of the the trees. (laughs) Got some trees, black curtains, some, some stuff above me kind of a little switch up so uh yeah hopefully this doesn't turn out too bad but um <laughs> we'll see how it goes um yeah i really do wish dragisha was here so uh yeah let's just see how this goes so yeah let me just start off by saying uh, a few days ago we just played a show in san diego we just got back we had the first love some dance presents show it had a pretty amazing artist if i can say so myself uh, Nick Gray. Nick who just fucking killed it. Ever since then, him and Many Faces, their tracks, their songs have been stuck in my head. So, uh, yeah, big shout out to Nick Gray and Many Faces. You guys should check them out. Nick Gray OB is his Instagram and Many Faces. It's Man Three Faces. That's his Instagram. They're they're amazing. I think they're awesome. So, uh, yeah, Nick definitely brought the fire. Uh, he's got this song called Pass It Around that uh, it's really catchy. Uh, if you can't tell, it's about uh, weed. <laughs> a blunt, a joint, I don't know, whatever you pass around. Maybe a bong. Maybe some people pass the bong around. But um, speaking of that, I'm pretty thirsty. <laughs> I'm parched. It's tough. I'm doing twice the talking. I'm going to have to do twice the drinking because I'm, you know, I'm talking so much. So, yeah, we'll see how this goes once again. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is the new set. If you watched the last episode, it was a little switch up. We had... Uh, a new set going on 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 this side of the studio over here the producer which by the way we're still looking the the uh the last guy he he uh he didn't cut it so yeah we're still looking for the producer so right now i'm in the producer chair so yeah we're doing it we're doing it hopefully you guys like these trees you know and uh the other tree over there you know you can't just have one you got to have two uh, but yeah, also, um, I can't forget Travis Faction. He fucking killed it in San Diego. He was a big part of the show. And yeah, it was so fun just to be there with him and to check out his music and his performance and stuff. And he killed it. So uh, yeah, shout out Travis Faction. He played a lot of cool music and a lot of originals, as you can tell, as you uh, must already assume. Yeah, it was really awesome. It was a fun time. <laughs> it was just a lot to do in one day. It was, uh, you know, within 24 hours, I had two plane flights because we decided to fly there and it was cool, but it's just, you know, last minute we, you know, always make the mix and prepare last minute. So it's less sleep and then we all got other stuff to do. So it just became, um, yeah, just a lot to do in one day, but Hey, that's something you just got to look forward to if you're going to be taking this seriously, which, um, it's just something to get used to, I guess. So yeah. It was fun, though. I had a great time out there. San Diego, it's a beautiful spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've only really been in Ocean Beach. That's kind of pretty much it. From from what I can tell, though, it's nice. It's like greener than Las Vegas. So, yeah, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Almost Christmas time. So hopefully you guys have been getting your loved ones a lot of gifts. You know, a lot of presents, you know, hopefully you have the heart to be a giver in this season because uh, times may be tough. The economy may be in a recession or so they may say, but 
yeah, let's just hope that, um, you know, you give your loved ones some nice presents this year. Because, you know, saying I love you, yeah, but buying them something that they can hold, you know, I think that that means a lot. So, yeah, the more you spend means the more you love them. That's how it goes. I would like to get into something very important. Okay, so this is why you're all here. It's for the important stuff. And with everything in this world that's happening right now, nothing is more important than Star Wars. So I would like to just talk about Star Wars right now. So this is the Star Wars episode. So you can tune out if you want. <laughs> um, I've just been uh, getting into it a lot for the past few months. Been watching a lot of the Star Wars stuff on Disney Plus and Disney Minus. They have a lot of good stuff. I would say it's better than the past few movies that have come out. But um, I also haven't watched those movies in a while, so who knows? Who knows? But it probably is a lot better because The Mandalorian is pretty badass, if I can say so myself. And um, let's see, Boba Fett was very cool too. Broke it down. He took his helmet off. He's in the desert. He's doing the stuff. He's helping out those... Um, fuck, what's their name? Not the, not the sand something. But anyways, he's helping them out. He's a tribe. The same people that Anakin slices up in episode two, um, Attack of the Clones, because, you know, they killed his mama. But yeah, so Boba Fett's helping them out. And he's kind of the hero. It's really cool. Really, really, really cool. I was watching something that... Frick, it's something with Star Wars, I think. But they took the enemy and they made him the hero at the end of it all. And I want to say it was the Boba Fett series. So yeah, I enjoyed Boba Fett. Uh, yeah, they had Obi-Wan come out not too long ago. Andor, that's what's happening right now. Hopefully there's a few more episodes left because I just watched the second to last one last night. So hopefully there's... Uh, many more to come because it's kind of slow. I don't know. I'm not really like digging it, digging it. It's cool though. I liked eating shrimp scampi to it last night at two o'clock in the morning. Then I exported the new song we have out called To The Rhythm. It's pretty cool. I also added a new mastering chain when I woke up today. But yeah, anyways. Uh, yeah, and or it's, it's getting a little better. I'm curious, you know, what's going to happen. But, um, um, sorry, I'm just so popular, getting so many messages right now. Um, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not important, but yeah, and or it's getting there. I'm, I'm digging it, kind of. So we'll see what happens. I will say, though, you know, every once in a while, you watch something on TV and you hear a song that's playing in the show or movie, and you just have to shazam it because it's so powerful. It just sends goosebumps down your spine. <laughs> like uh, I don't know, I don't know if goosebumps can even get on your spine, but it um, it's really, really, really good. So yeah, you got to Shazam it. And that's this song came out on Andor. I, I believe the episode's called "Nobody's Listening," which maybe is like episode seven or eight. Um, he gets like captured and all that. But then they play an electronic music song at the end of the episode. And I was like, damn, dude, this shit kind of speaks to me. Because I thought it was a pretty cool song, whoever made it. So then I had to look into it. I shazammed it, looked into it. And it's, um, it's the guy who's doing the score for the whole series. It's really impressive. His name is Nicholas Bertel. So Nicholas Bertel is doing the score for Andor. And I just think that's, you know, something he should celebrate because that's a very, very big achievement. He's on Disney plus he's on Disney. He's on star Wars. He's doing the newest stuff. And what I love about what they're putting out on Disney now is just the graphics. It's like the coolest star Wars has ever looked in my opinion. It looks really cool. The CGI is not cheesy at all. It looks badass, And you know, I think so, which that's what kind of ruined it. The um, ruined it for me for the last couple of films that they did. So yeah, this song just blew my mind. It's kind of a an electronic tropical song that is just 
really catchy and I just stood out for Star Wars, which kind of just makes it seem like this modern thing kind of, but it, it, everything just fit and it was, it just made, made sense, you know? So it was really cool. So yeah, Nicholas Bertel. So then I look more into this guy since I was like, how, how, like, how exactly is this guy, you know, on Star Wars? He's doing the score. He's getting his stuff on there, which is pretty impressive. So he's done other stuff, which led up to, to, to doing that. And, um, uh, so yeah, I just think he's been doing it for like over a decade and he worked up to it. So it's, it's really cool. You can tell that he's really talented. Um, his music had, um, a lot of different styles. So, so when I heard that song, which by the way, I believe it's called, um, uh, well, it says, Nem uh, Niamos and there's a Morlana club mix, but Niamos by, by Nicholas Pertel, it's, um, it's really a good hook. So, um, yeah, definitely check that out if you can. So, yeah, I looked more into this, this fella, and he's just been doing movies for a while. So it's really impressive, I think. One of the first movies he, he did was with Natalie Portman. And uh, I haven't seen it yet, but <laughs> I don't know. Probably check it out one day. But, yeah, it's really cool, you know. I don't know. I like Star Wars. I like music. So when there's good music that I want to Shazam, it's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Andor has been happening. You know, it's kind of cool. You know, kind of whatnot. I think, I think like overall right now, Disney taking over Star Wars was a good move. I think that they're doing a good job as of now. Uh, it was a big shoe to fill when they had to kind of wrap up the other episodes and the story with Luke Skywalker and you know, Princess Leia and all that. So um, I, I didn't imagine how it would turn out. But from what I saw, it's still a, you know, well-made well, well -made movie and it's still put together nicely. Uh, it could have could have been like any other way, but um, <laughs> it's uh, not, not bad at all. So I, I don't know. I'm kind of excited to watch it maybe a little more. Uh, it's been a few years since I watched it. I liked Rogue One. I'll say that. I liked Rogue One, which Andor is kind of like a um, prequel to even Rogue One, which is kind of cool. Like, it's kind of cool in general. Star Wars is doing this whole thing. They're really digging deep into it. Uh, so, yeah, I was on YouTube last night going down like a little, uh, you know, some ideas of what they're about to do next. And um, there's really nothing in store. So who knows what's going to happen? But somebody said there might be, uh, like, you know, the future episodes of the Star Wars films are going to have completely completely new characters. And um, so, yeah, hopefully they don't fuck that up. And maybe they'll have new lightsabers, too. Like yellow? That might be cool, yellow. I like that. Yellow. Yellow's a good color for light. Yellow and white. So I want to continue by getting into, you know, some big cutting news from Star Wars, you know. So what we have here is, uh, you know, if you're into The Mandalorian, we have some Mandalorian uh, news for you if you're into that. Uh, so, yeah, let's see the news. Um, Mandalorian news huh I believe there's um season three of the Mandalorian is coming out soon so let's get into some crazy facts of Star Wars and you know maybe these may be even too crazy <laughs> for you <laughs> we'll see we'll see what happens uh probably not though probably not uh, yeah, R two D two once spoke English, and it's kind of a jerk, apparently. You know, <laughs> I I can just imagine how big of a jerk R two D two must have been. You know, like uh, first of all, he's not that tall, so he's always in a bad mood. He can't see anything over the kitchen counter, so he doesn't know what you're doing. He doesn't know what the hell's going on up there. You could be freaking on a laptop. He can't see what you're typing. You could be freaking eating breakfast that you made on the stove. 
He doesn't even know what you're cooking on the stove. No wonder he's in a bad mood and he's a jerk. I don't blame him. Cut him some slack. He's freaking, he's, he's doing his thing, man. He's got the gadgets. He's showing up. He's rolling around. You know, he's beeping and bopping. Cut him some slack. R2-D2. That's what I got to say about him. Yeah, the original Return of the Jedi ending saw Luke Skywalker turn evil. You see right there? You see that? <laughs> you see right there? Luke Skywalker turning evil at the end of episode six, Return of the Jedi. That's that's what I'm talking about. That's way better. That means they didn't have to do this freaking Disney thing where he's freaking meditating on a mountain and transforms and then dies because he uses his energy and whatever. He should have just turned evil, you know, rebuild the Death Star, get some new troops, take over, listen to Metallica, call it a day. But no, he became a good guy. <laughs> yeah, it's really sad. Yeah, let's see. Carrie Fisher slapped Oscar Isaac more than 40 times on the first day of shooting. You believe that? Oscar Isaac is one of my favorite actors, only because he's been in uh, a few of my favorite films for a while now. You got to pay big tribute to his Star Wars uh, roles that he's been doing. He's been in Annihilation, which is another Natalie Portman movie, shout out. And he's been in Ex Machina, which is a very interesting film. It's just one of those films that has only three people like in the whole movie, but it's so powerful. It's, it's, um, it's, it makes you think a lot after that film, whatever the word is I'm thinking of. It's very good. Um, and it's a plot twist at the ending. And it's one of those films that's near, it's near future. So it could happen any year, any month, any day, any hour, any second. I skipped a minute. So yeah, it's a really powerful movie. Oscar Isaac got slapped a lot, apparently. So maybe it's because he's, maybe it's because he's freaking in all these roles and she's jealous. I don't know. Samuel L. Jackson had his lightsaber engraved with a bad word. Okay, the fact they said bad word, and it's Samuel L. Jackson. I think we can assume what it is. Uh huh. <laughs> The original Darth Vader is banned from all Star Wars events. That's because he's freaking piloting the Death Star, killing planets. I would ban him too. Like he's cool, but he's like the type of cool that, you know, you, in a movie or in a video game. I like Grand Theft Auto in a video game. I drive on the sidewalk. I'm not going to do it in real life. I'm not going to invite Darth Vader to my party. Of course he's banned, but I like him in the movie. That's what I'm saying. Adam Driver. All right, Adam Driver recorded his last lines as Kylo Ren in his own closet. <laughs> wow. Speaking of Kylo Ren, my trash can is Kylo Ren. Remember I said earlier I got a Star Wars trash can? Speaking of trash, <laughs> Adam Driver uh, recorded his, <laughs> his last lines as Kylo Ren. No, 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 it was fine. One of my favorite memes is more more with all the pillows on the couch. <laughs> it's a lot of pillows. Some people got a lot of pillows. It's a good meme. Got it right here. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm talking shit. I'm talking shit. Nothing, nothing um, but respect for people like Adam driver doing his thing. Um, that's why I'm excited to watch star Wars again. I am. Uh, yeah, that's totally kidding. I do. I do like Adam driver. I thought he killed it on, on SNL. Um, let's see. Chewbacca. 
You guys know this guy? Chewbacca? Yeah. <laughs> Chewbacca had to be protected from bear hunters. Okay, first of all, are they filming outside? They probably were. Some of the wood scenes looked real. They probably were filming outside, which means there's probably hunters out there doing their thing. They get to feed their family. You know, they're hunting out bears. So Chewbacca getting shot during filming. I believe it. I believe it. Oh! I totally believe it. Yeah. Okay. This one really pisses me off. Okay. This one strikes home because there are several direct references to the Godfather franchise throughout the whole film. I knew it, especially like Jabba the Hutt. I mean, you got no respect. <laughs> you got no respect. He's just trying to get the money he got paid. He paid the bounty hunter to do his thing. He's ordered by Lord Vader. He's out there. He's trying to get the, the gang involved. You know, throw a little intimidation. Next thing you know, they're making fun of him. They say he's too big. He's got to get on a diet. He's had enough. He puts on a show. Has the people dance for him. He's out there. He's doing the thing. He sets a booby trap. Boom. Pushes the button. They fall down. The rancor gobbles him up. They're doing their thing. Everyone's dancing. He's just trying to get respect. That's what I don't get. You know? Yeah. Um, you guys don't... <laughs> this is another thing that gets me. This thing freaking really gets me. InSync was originally casted in Attack of the Clones. Look, I don't even know what this article is going to say, but it's either one or two things. They're either dressed up as stormtroopers and they're dancing and they're doing the synchronized dancing. They're doing their, or they're freaking entertainment from one of the bounty hunters. They're singing. They're singing before the people are, are watching the Coliseum and they all die. With Natalie Portman, she climbs up the column with the chain. I don't know what's going on, but it says here it's George Lucas's daughter wanted them in the movie, which I don't blame her. Okay. I would have chose Backstreet Boys, but in sync, that's pretty good. Okay. Okay. So let's see. She, oh, okay. Yeah. So he invites the members of the, the band in sync to make a brief cameo in the prequel attack of the clones. Um, uh, during their tour tour. So they had to take a break from their tour. Like, excuse, excuse me, globe globe. We're taking a break. Um, we're going to do star Wars to film the movie. So yeah, peace out. We'll sing the tunes later. Um, so yeah, let's see if they did it. And uh, yeah, they're going to pretend like they're fighting droids. Isn't that how they dance already? Aren't they like dodging? laser beams and shit. Um, but yeah, sadly the scene was cut in the final edit of the film. I don't blame them. You know, it's, it's hard what to keep and what to not keep, but in sync and attack of the clones in sync and attack the clones during like Django Fett when he gets decapitated and Mesa Windu standing there. And then you see in sync saying bye, bye, bye. Okay, it does sound kind of cool. <laughs> it does sound kind of cool. Darth Maul barely blinks in the Phantom of the Menace. Who's even looking at his eyes? I can't stop looking at those face tats and all that red makeup. It's pretty badass. And he's got the double yielding lightsaber. You know, this is kind of red lights remind me of the, you know, the dark side. So is it inspired? Is Just TV inspired by the dark side? Maybe. Going back to Chewbacca, Chewbacca's voice is a mixture of, of badger, lion, seals, and walrus. 
whoa, that's a lot of mammals and wildlife. First of all, who's the engineer? Who's mixing that down? You know, is it a live recording? Are they flying them in? They got studio time. And is it all at once? Or they got like, you know, Monday they fly in the badger, Tuesday the lion, Wednesday, well, Wednesday they take off. But Thursday they got the walrus, and Friday they got the seal. You know, the weekend they edit it. Next thing you know, Monday you got a hit. You know, you got Chewbacca's voice out there. You know, and quite frankly, I'm not even sure why they had to hire those musicians because, you know, I could have even done it. So, yeah, Chewbacca is pretty badass. I like the planet Chewbacca comes on. Well, that he lives on. It's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> let's see here. None of these are really hitting it for me. So, um, yeah, Boba Fett's Boba's Fett's Boba's Fett's. <laughs> Okay. Okay, guys. Last interesting fact of the Star Wars series. Maybe this tickles your feet, but Yoda's original name apparently was going to be Buffy. Buffy. That doesn't have the ring to it, you know. Buffy, my name original was. It doesn't, it doesn't sound good. You know, what is he, Yoda the Jedi Master? <laughs> or uh, Yoda the, the Sith Slayer? Yeah, it doesn't have the ring to it. It does not. So, unfortunately, um, Buffy, bye 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 bye. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited for the new Star Wars series. We'll see what's happening. It might be in 2024, it might not. We'll see, but um, it's getting there. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the Star Wars segment. Very exciting stuff. As you can see, I got one, two, three, four. Four guys uh, uh, ready and protecting me. They're my security guards right now because uh, I'm, I'm in the studio a lot, especially uh, since we upgraded. Got some new goodies going on. Not only did we upgrade the set, but we've been doing a lot of music in here and it's a better sound, but also we got Ableton 11. So it's very exciting. I love it. I've been running Ableton 10 for a minute now and Ableton 11 has been out for a few years. So it's very exciting to have the new one. Yeah. There's not that big of a, big of a, <laughs> big, big of a difference. There's not, there's not, there's not. Um, it's kind of like getting an iPhone 12 and an iPhone 13. Same shit. Same shit. Just maybe another camera, a couple more buttons. Well, a couple more uh, touch buttons. But it's very exciting. They have new things like convolution reverb, hybrid reverb. Um, it's organized more with the tracks and kind of a purpose as to what you're adding to it. So now... You know, if you want to add drive or color dynamics, it's kind of labeled like that. It's not just like EQ. So that's pretty cool. Max for life, max for life, max life, whatever it's called. I've been digging that. Uh, the first few times I used it, I made something really cool. So I just have to kind of dig more into it. But it pretty much took a melody I made and blah, 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 did its magic. It sounded completely different. <laughs> it turned a melody I made into triplets, which kind of sounded cool and it popped out. So then I was just, you know, making a song and then I had these triplet things going on. Then I was like, yeah, you know what? It's kind of off. So let me turn the hi-hats triplet. Then boom, turn the hi-hats. Did the drums triplets, the bass. So I kind of all of a sudden had this triplet song going on and it was cool. And for a second I thought, you know, maybe there's like a triplet, um, like, thing that can come out of here you know it like uh maybe like more songs and different rhythms because like who knows like music is kind of the same for a while it could be different 
So maybe that's the thing. Maybe like triplets. So I did this, exported it, spent all this time mastering it, tweaking it, cutting too many sounds out. And uh, then we exported it to DJ. And it was just, it was whack. Whack. (laughs) It was just too much. Like with the triplets, you couldn't mix anything in. I'd be surprised. Like it was just a little bit off, which I thought still the eighth note with the, you know, because a lot of bass and tech house, it's hi hats every eighth note. But yeah, even the triplet on that eighth note was a triplet note. So yeah, I completely threw it off. And ultimately, I was like, eh. So completely changed it. And that's to the rhythm. So now we kind of added some sounds, uh, swapped some stuff out. So hopefully it's a lot better. Um but yeah, it's just cool how Ableton took that sound and made it into triplets. So, and that, that's Max for Life. They have a lot of interesting stuff inside of that, which I'm still trying to figure out. But Ableton 11 itself, the upgrade itself, just using it, it's a lot more, um, it, like I'm able to use it faster. You know, it's, it's really good. It's more, uh, I can get my movements down faster, which ultimately that's the big thing. You know, it makes my CPU kind of go nuts once I start doing stuff. But ultimately, I'm trying to trying to get better at doing that too. Just freezing stuff, not getting too complicated with too many project files, and um, yeah, just you know, less is more. It's a lot going on. Uh, I I wanted to say earlier this week I watched your mom's house live it's a very cool christmas a cool christmas <laughs> so i loved it i very much enjoyed it i thought it was a very cool christmas indeed i missed the last one i think i've only missed one ymh live so i've seen them all and i'm a true mommy if i can say so myself and <laughs> So it's always exciting to be watching it live. I watched it alone, which by the way, I think I've seen all of them alone, except some of the, I've seen a couple of the two bears, one cave with some people and um, another YMH with my mom. Uh, But yeah, this one I watched alone. So it was just, it was exciting. Like regardless, it was, it's always a good time. I'm tuning in. I'm with the other mommies who are live. I'm such a fan. And if I can like just start with my, you know, upbringing with being a uh, Tom Segura, your mom's house fan. Uh, I had this coworker at a job and, you know, we're all strangers. He's over there. We're over here. Don't know each other at all. But I would hear it. I would hear him laughing. It would kind of annoy me. You know, I'm like, why is it? Why, why is he laughing? Why is he in a good mood? I'm at work. I'm struggling over here. It's too much work. <laughs> and this guy's laughing. He's giggling. He's got something figured out. Like, what? what is he doing that I'm not doing? So anyways, we bond over smoking weed. <laughs> so there's a few times we smoke and we get to talking and stuff. And um, he's just, uh, he's figured out how to enjoy life. He's got a cheat code and it's podcasts. He's He's watching your mom's house podcast. And at this time, like, I didn't really, like, other than Joe Rogan every once in a while, podcasting is, it wasn't yet, like, a a regular thing for me. It wasn't a daily thing for me. Even now, like, I watch them daily. I watch a lot of them now. And I don't miss the ones I watch. But at one time, I was introduced to it by a coworker. He was just giggling all day watching your mom's house, which is Tom Segura's podcast with Christina P., Christina Pazitsky, and I would just hear him giggling and giggling. So well, since then, I started watching it, and there's just something special about what they're doing. It's very enjoyable, and I thought the time that I came in was a beautiful era, but it's still awesome. It's still amazing. So last time, uh, well, a few days ago, last um, last thing I watched was the, Your Mom's House Live, and it was a trip. It was a ride. 
and uh, it's an, an uncensored event. You gotta you gotta pay for it. You watch it. You're tuned in live with all the other fans, and um, they, they they bring they bring it to the table, and it was very exciting. So um, there was a couple moments I I couldn't even like my jaw dropped. There's moments I laughed out loud. There's moments I've really, really laughed. There's moments I had to cover the screen. Then there's moments I really had to like change the tab. I maybe I even like muted it for a second because it's just you know I just want to live a life that's I got shit to do and I I want to do it in, with a peace of mind. <laughs> and uh, from what I've learned, some of the your mom's house lives is it can be intense. But this one, you know, maybe I'm building a tolerance because. It was, it was enjoyable, uh, all throughout. But big shout out to your mom's house live. So the next one, I'm gonna do it. I'll probably have like a a, a, a viewing party. You know, make it very enjoyable. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was very exciting. Um, yeah, just to wrap this off real quick, I just want to uh, say, like, see into this poll I put out earlier, and this poll is just a question we had online it's it's dealing with like your favorite genre whether it's you know bass house trap or dubstep hip hop or everything you know maybe you just like everything maybe genres don't even matter to you and maybe bass house is too specific maybe you like another type of house but that's just how i say it because there's bass and there's house so i don't know how else to put it but yeah i put out this little poll on our just cuz instagram so yeah if you don't if you don't follow us already you know if you don't have just tv subscribe please do that but also just cuz is the music we produce it's um it's a big journey we've had so far so yeah please if you if you want to support us it would mean a lot if you can follow us on instagram it's official just cuz so yeah i put out a poll earlier what do you listen to more bass house trap dubstep hip-hop or anything and you'd be surprised i would say well it's 50 50 bass house and anything it's a tie wow so yeah i guess um uh, oh, there you go. It's a tie. <laughs> the people say it. that's that's all there is to know. You know, it's a very ground hitting poll we put out. Um, I'm just gonna be asking some stuff like this because you know I just want to make shit that bumps, shit that people can dance to, and and DJing and playing shows. That's how we can connect with the world and and really get like a live you know, analysis of what's going on and plus tweak and make our stuff better. So, but yeah, the fans, it's how we figured this all out. So yeah, let us know how we're doing. <laughs> let us know how Just TV is doing. And um, yeah, if you have any questions for the next episode, we, we can give you a shout out on the next episode. We'd like to hear from you. We would like to see from you in the comments. You know, we always respond and it means a lot that you're here with us. I would like to leave you off with a Just Cause song called Technosis. And thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back next week on another Just TV. Peace. Hypnosis is usually induced by a procedure known as a hypnotic induction involving a series of preliminary instructions and signals.